до школи Йосифа Сліпого завітав дуже поважний гість. Міністр освіти Онтаріо Стівен Лече. Міністр мав змогу побачити, як молодші класи зустрічали його привітальними піснями та танцями, а старші класи мали змогу дати йому декілька питань. Тож, увага на екран.
Well, good morning. I thought it was an opportunity just to come and introduce myself to you and to thank every single one of you. Um, we live in a really crazy world, and I think it is so special that in this country, that people leaving war can come to this land where there's freedom, where there's opportunity, and there's security. And there really isn't a country like this on Earth. Um, and I know, for many of you, your mothers and fathers, they know from Ukraine. I'm just curious, how many of you uh, are newcomers to Canada in the last year or two? Okay, so quite a few of you uh, came to Canada last year, and I think it is absolutely amazing that we welcome them with our open arms. That is what Canada is all about. And I wanted to celebrate. I've been to all three of the Eastern uh, Rite uh, Ukrainian schools in Toronto Catholic. This is my final school. It is the largest school. There's over 200 proud Ukrainians that came here over the past year fleeing war. Uh, and it's such a special experience for me as minister just to let you know that we value every single one of you. We are proud of every single one of you for being so courageous uh, in this world, in this crazy time. So I want to give a, a shout out to your principal because it's seldom that there's such a level of respect from the entire community, so we really appreciate it. You've made a difference here. So thank you. Thank you so much. So we have some awesome, awesome questions that our sevens and eights have prepared, and I am eager for you to share them. So what is one goal you hope to achieve as the Minister of Education for the province of Ontario? That's an amazing question. Um, I think a, a big priority is making sure that we continue to increase the amount of young people graduating our schools. We already have one of the highest graduation rates in Canada, it's about 89%. That still means like 1 in 10 students are graduating. So I think if we could really zero in on giving everyone a path to graduation so that they can pursue college or university or the skilled trades, that, I mean, I really believe that alone can change someone's life. Uh, you know, it's a, a vehicle um, to success. You know, I really believe it is. And so I think uh, that's another an area of priority. And, uh, and what another priority I've heard is that we've got to expand this gym, apparently. Uh, I keep getting told about it. So, so, continuing to increase graduation rates at a more local level. King of Serva has given me some work to take away to homework today, so but, uh, thank you for the question. How can we create more culturally diverse curriculum in our Ontario? Something we are doing across all of our new uh, curricula, all the new curricula that's coming out of the math and so on, is making sure that we, you know, you as young people can see yourself reflected in the curriculum. The examples we cite, the individuals we profile, you know, making sure it is more reflective of modern Canada. You know, when I went to school, uh, I won't say a lot of my textbooks reflected uh, Canada of like, it felt like the 1940s, you know, it was a different time. And you may even think that today too, but there's a great deal of effort both at the school board level and ministry to make sure that our textbooks, um, the examples we grow, the people we profile, are more reflective of the changing world around us. Mr. Fetchy, my name is Sophia, and I have one question for you. If you could do one thing differently in education, what would you mean? Another one of these thought provoking questions, Akita. Akita? Thank you. Okay. One thing differently. Hmm. Well, I think uh, the one thing we, we can do differently. Um, Honestly, I think it's making sure that what we teach, the curriculum, is more reflective of where the puck is going. And what I mean by that is, you know, this is nothing to do with you or anyone in this room, it has to do with me as minister, but sometimes the, the curriculum, the, the, the contents that the students are educated from every year, sometimes that material is very outdated. You know, I remember when we introduced a new math curriculum for students of grade one to age, right? It didn't mention things like uh, AI, right? That's the part of the world we live in, for good or for bad. It didn't mention coding as a requirement, so that we have that computational skill, you know, uh, sequencing coding, programming. 
it, it didn't really talk about things like YouTube or like the I, you know, think of the last time it was updated, it was 2005, you know, I've got an iPhone right here, that wasn't on the market. You know, YouTube had not been launched, Twitter had not been public, they had not gone public yet. So the rules changed, but the curriculum sort of stayed static or something. How can we create extra opportunities to extend learning? That's a great question. So, um, and Alex, one of the things I'm excited about is that this summer we're expanding the amount of opportunities for students. This may apply more in high school, but to allow students to take um, either a reach ahead course, let's say you're in grade nine and in the summer you want to get a bit ahead and take a grade 10 course over the summer, encouraging more students to do those reach ahead courses, um, allowing students to take a more diverse offering of courses, um, 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 uh, online for some courses that may not be offered in school, like often specialized courses, some of the language courses. So the point is we're trying to create more options, more paths for you to continuously learn. Uh, one of the things we did this past year that I think was really powerful was a tutoring program. We even joined up with the uh, Canadian Ukrainian Congress specifically to announce support for Ukrainian students in Ukrainian and Russian English. Um, and I think these types of things are going to really make a difference if we allow young people to continuously learn. And I will tell you, you're not a student until grade 12. Like all these adults in the room, we are literally continuously learning. Right? That's part of leadership is the willingness to accept that like I can be better. What was the path that you took that led you to your position as a minister of education? I was 13. I didn't come from a political family. My parents were pretty confused about why their son was obsessed with politics. They didn't really understand my interest, but they supported me. And I'd say, you know, regardless if you're interested in municipal, local government, in federal government, provincial government, you know, regardless, if you're interested in government, in politics, in making a difference, I'd argue we need young people. We need people like you who take our government. And every one of you, some of you might see this, if I can do this, I know that uh, every single one of you can do this. Uh, and you could be, you should have much greater ambitions. You could be prime ministers of this country, okay? Uh, I want a JCS prime minister, okay? So, none of you, all of you, you know, know that the best possible to remember. So, so, to express gratitude, or as I learned today, the um, really I wanted to let you know that you have inspired the problems. And so for many of you, some of you will be graduating from JCS, which has been an amazing experience. I know you're proud uh, of this school, proud of your teachers, proud of your principals, and proud to wear um, those three letters um, you know, with a sense of recognition that you're proud of history of your JCS. So I wanted to give a recognition to some of you, to the graduating students, all of the graduating students, just to simply say that this province, your government, is proud of you for overcoming incredible adversity over the past few years. And so I have, I don't do this for all students, I don't do this every day, but I felt a special obligation on behalf of my friend Kate Asurma, my friend and colleague uh, in the um, to present every graduating student with a certificate for the Ministry of Education, just to recognize your exceptional leadership as young people making a difference in this country. And uh, I know your parents are proud, and trust me when I say we're all proud of you today. So thank you for inspiring your country and being model citizens, because that's what citizenship is about. Being kind, being engaged, being active, being committed to make a difference, determined to leave a legacy. And every one of you can do that.